Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 22nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend, Didier did publish a post with a video that actually illustrates how to use a technique that he has described in an earlier post to detect a Metasploit and Cobalt Strike. What he's looking at here is the URLs being used to download the actual malware, so not the command control channel that would come next and often uses HTTPS. And these download URLs, they always end with a couple of sort of random letters, but turns out they have to meet certain checksum requirements. So Diddy does show how these checksums can be calculated with a tool of his and how you can then identify that the download was possibly Cobalt Strike or Metasploit. Now, this is not recommended to sort of outright block all URLs that meet that checksum. That would be too noisy. But um, if you have a suspicion that a certain URL doesn't look quite right, you would like to confirm that. Uh, well, uh, this is a nice uh, little trick to use. And the NCC group is reporting that they detected active exploitation of a recent vulnerability in F5's Big IP, Big IQ. I mentioned the vulnerability when the patch was released a little bit less than two weeks ago, CVE 2021. 22986 and it does allow for remote code execution if an attacker has access to the iControl REST API. Exploitation yet again requires server-side request forging to first bypass authentication and obtain a session token. Then that session token is being used in order to send the command to the REST API. So the real vulnerability here in some ways is the server-side request forging vulnerability that allows for the retrieval of the session token. And with multiple exploits uh, having been made public in order to take advantage of these vulnerabilities, it's no surprise that we see them actually being used out in the wild. At this point, as usual, uh, your F5 Big IP should be considered compromised if you haven't already patched yet. DDoS mitigation company NetScout is reporting that they see a continuing use of DTLS in denial of service attack. This really has become sort of popular a few months ago with a vulnerability in Citrix being heavily abused there. DTLS, of course, is a datagram TLS or TLS over UDP. Typically in TLS, the client sends a client hello to initiate the connection. If this happens over T TCP, the server responds with a server hello and also a certificate, which could be a quite substantial amount of data. Over UDP, the server is first supposed to send a challenge back to prevent spoofed requests. Well, uh, the vulnerability here is that uh, this challenge is either not sent or not necessary, and the server will respond to spoofed requests with uh, quite substantial data, including things like uh, the TLS certificate. These attacks have been generating hundreds of gigabits per second of traffic, so nothing trivial. First order of business here is always make sure that you're not contributing to these attacks. So double check if you're using DTLS that everything is up to date. Now, if you're being attacked by this type of denial of service attack, there's often little you can do other than hope that your DDoS mitigation service will be able to filter the attack. And late last week, I mentioned that Microsoft released an emergency update that fixed a problem with this month's security updates. The symptom was that you received a blue screen of death if you try to use certain printers. Well, it turns out that this emergency fix wasn't quite the fix that Microsoft hoped for, and Microsoft has withdrawn this fix Again, if your printer is working fine and if you don't experience any 
blue screens of death while printing, then you're all good and don't have to worry about. If you do experience issues, then double check Microsoft's support site for details. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.